Um, uh, That's Robert Mueller, an attorney with decades of experience, the second longest serving director of the FBI, a combat veteran, the special counsel investigating Russian interference in the election of Donald Trump, and a Republican appointee. This witch hunt could finally be wrapping up. Mueller was born in New York City to a Navy veteran father working for multinational mega corporation DuPont and a mother descended from a robber baron era railroad executive. His middle name is Swan. After time at the elite private St. Paul's School in New Hampshire, where he played lacrosse and soccer with future Democratic presidential candidate and Secretary of State John Kerry. In 1962, Mueller was named the school's top athlete. Kerry was not. Mueller went on to Princeton, where he joined the University Cottage Club, a Princeton eating club, which is obviously a secret society. He'd earn a master's in international relations and use it to relate with foreign lands, joining the Marine Corps in the midst of the Vietnam War. He rose in the ranks to command a rifle platoon and was repeatedly decorated with military awards. He went to the University of Virginia and earned a law degree, jumping from a law firm to his first government job in 1976 as a prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney's Office for San Francisco and would move on to do the same in Boston, working under eventual Republican governor and Libertarian vice presidential candidate William Weld. Weld called him a straight arrow. He didn't try to be elegant or fancy, he just put the cards on the table. When Weld got promoted, Mueller took his old job. He'd hold a series of federal legal positions and each time he was appointed by a Republican. He'd eventually be named the head of the Justice Department's criminal division, where he was widely criticized for ironing his jeans on the weekends. He ran prosecutions of John Gotti and investigated the Pan Am Flight 103 bombing and Panamanian leader Manuel Noriega. When President George Bush Sr. lost to President Bill Clinton in 1992, Mueller retreated to private practice, a pretty standard move for someone of one political party when the other takes over. He'd leave the high-paid private law firm world for a pay cut to work as a homicide prosecutor in Washington because, as his friends say, prosecuting was in his blood. They will get the cuffs slapped on them, they will go to jail, and they will serve time. During the time, he'd be described by a lawyer he went up against in court as one of these Jimmy Stewart characters with old-fashioned American values. Another lawyer he faced said, he's a law enforcement advocate to his bones. He lives it and breathes it. One colleague remembers telling Mueller that he needs to be careful with the battles he picks. Mueller responded, I don't. And then presumably an incredibly long dramatic pause. Bruise easily. In 2001, President George W. Bush nominated Mueller as director of the FBI. He was confirmed 98 to 0 in the Senate. He would take the role on September 4, 2001. Just days into his tenure as FBI head, America came under attack. You can see that plane coming around the building. He avoided the limelight and worked his employees very hard in stating a new 7 a.m. meeting and working to start using intelligence to prevent rather than react to terrorism. He had knee surgery not long after the attack and according to James Comey, declined anesthesia in favor of biting on a leather belt. He only made a few public appearances during his time as director and was known for refusing summaries of intelligence to read the whole thing. Republican Michael Chertoff, former head of the Department of Homeland Security said, Bob will be known as the most transformative director in the history of the FBI since Hoover. And I mean that in a good way. When Attorney General John Ashcroft was in the hospital, Bush's chief of staff went to his bedside to try to convince him in his sickly state to sign documents that would have given the NSA unprecedented surveillance powers. But they were stopped by James Comey and Robert Mueller, who literally raced to the hospital, sirens and all, to stop the signing. Mueller left FBI agents to guard the room. They succeeded. Afterwards, they all threatened to resign to stop the program. Mueller has defied Bush on torture, claiming no terror attack has ever been stopped by enhanced interrogation techniques. He also barred FBI employees from participating in CIA torture. Bush and Cheney confronted him on it, and he said, if suspects don't commit a crime, it would be difficult to identify and isolate. Dick Cheney, unhappy at the lack of waterboarding in his country, hit back with, that's not good enough. We're hearing this too much from the FBI. President Barack Obama extended Mueller's term, unusual for a new president from a different party. For 12 years, he kept the FBI out of politics, said his former deputy director. He eventually retired to be replaced by none other than his homie, James Comey. After a few more years in the private sector, Mueller was tapped to be the director of the FBI again. Almost. After firing James Comey, President Trump interviewed Mueller for the role on May 16, 2017. He didn't get it. 
but literally the very next day, he did get a new job. Special counsel for the Department of Justice. A special counsel is a prosecutor appointed to lead an investigation where the party that would normally lead it would be a conflict of interest. This particular counsel is investigating links between the Russian government and Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. Mueller resigned from his private sector job, working for a law firm that happened to represent Trump's special advisor, Jared Kushner, because of the conflict of interest. The investigation was started by James Comey's FBI, but handed over to his special counsel when Trump fired him. Mueller has already charged Paul Manafort and his business partner, Rick Gates, who surrendered to the FBI. Gates has pled guilty to Mueller, along with Michael Flynn, former Trump campaign staffer George Papadopoulos, and several others. Thirteen Russian citizens have also been indicted. So can Mueller be trusted? Is he the justice-obsessed Republican appointee everyone he's worked with paints him as? Or is he a Kerry lacrosse team playing, Clinton-loving, robber baron Link member of the deep state? Only time will tell, unless he gets fired.